thank the organizers of the conference for inviting me to speak with you. In today's talk, I'm going to be presenting to you a method I've developed to use acoustics to estimate populations of bats emerging from caves, as well as show pilot data on how we can extend this to other taxa. So we all know, of course, that we use acoustics for conservation, and in general, this is used to obtain rough estimates of the abundance of species with identification. This isn't very useful, however, for getting reliable population counts from animals that have a variable number of calls, such as bats that are echolocating in an environment. Furthermore, it's not useful for dense calling scenarios when you can't separate overlapping uh, bat calls. But what we have found out is that if you look at the recording of bats that are leaving a cave, such as in this video here, if you look at a video recording and the acoustic recording, the overall recording of the acoustic stream, the amplitude scales with the number of bats that are emer emerging in a given period of time. So when there's more bats, the acoustic amplitude is louder. So using this observation, if we then take a recording of bats, if you have a synchronized video and acoustic recording, and then you break that up into windows, and then you make a plot of the number of bats in a given window versus the sound level in that window, we would predict that we would see this really nice scaling that would potentially follow some sort of predictable relationship in which as the number of bats in a window increases, the sound level increases as well. So another way to graphically represent this is if you have a synchronized video and acoustic recording and then you graph it, you would get a linear relationship where the acoustics could be predicted by the number of bats that are present in that window plus typical regression parameters. And so this is the ground truthing method. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in this talk is how we ground truth this method to see if this actually can be used. So the testing locations for this, I used four different caves. Two were Tadarida Brasiliensis caves, one in New Mexico and one right at the border of Kansas and Oklahoma. And of course, this is in the United States, as well as two gray bat caves, both of which were located in Missouri. So the placement of the sensors for this, um, we used a placement of placing the camera and the microphone below the stream of bats as they were leaving from the cave. So this is the cave entrance, the bats are flying in this direction, and we put the camera below the bats pointing up. So you have the bats that are nicely silhouetted against the sky if you're using standard video imagery. Um, also, if you're using thermal imagery, you don't have any clutter, hopefully, in the background. And then we had synchronized acoustic recordings to that. So we, the synchronized acoustic recordings to the video, which is part of the ground truthing process. So in terms of the recorders that we've used, I've actually played around with a lot of different recorders to test this. Um, uh, most excitingly, I've vetted this with audio moth recorders. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with these wonderful devices. They're about $70. Um, we've tested these with four recorders. We have to, we, it is important I point out, we do have to program these with custom firmware because the standard firmware that comes on these recorders, um, it, it, the signals get clipped, especially if you're recording right close to the cave opening because the bat calls are so loud, you're so close to the bat. So we have to have custom firmware to reduce the gain setting on those. But we tested these with variable gain settings as well as one tested in the new waterproof case that uh, Acoustic Devices has produced. We've also tested this with um, a, a microphone produced from a company Dodotronic, which is called an Ultramic. Um, this is a USB plug and play that has to be connected to a tablet for recording. And we've also tested this with the Wildlife Acoustics SM3 bat, which is, uh, this version is no longer available, but it was approximately $1,500 US when I purchased this. We used different uh, microphones, one directional and two omnidirectional. Now remember the ground truthing process also includes having synchronized video imagery. So the video cameras we've tested for this depend on the lighting that's available at each location. So when there is sufficient light, we've had great success using GoPro Hero 4s. Um, this was done a couple years ago, so of course there's newer models of GoPros, but we use a GoPro Hero 4 with the wide field of view setting, which is about 120 degrees. And we this can record up to 240 frames per second. Um, and of course the power and recording is all in one unit. And this is in, in environments where there is sufficient ambient light. So in many parts of the Southwest, bats uh, emerge when there is sufficient daylight. So um, you can see the video of what this looks like here. Again, below the bats pointing up for contrast. 
And then when there's not sufficient ambient light, this was with the gray bats, they leave a lot later. We used, um, it is quite expensive, but in terms of thermal cameras, this is actually considered a low cost thermal camera, about 3000 to $5,000 US. They have different fields of view and you can see what that low cost thermal camera, the uh, video looks like here. This was recorded in complete darkness. The limitation of these lower cost thermal cameras, however, is that they do have a much lower, um, a much lower sampling rate in terms of the frames per second. So you can have some blur on this. But again, with the, with, with the ground truthing, the most important thing is that you're just using this to get the true count of how many bats are emerging in a window. So if there is blur, as long as you can separate individual bats and count individual bats, that's really sufficient. And this is all part of the ground truthing process. So again, synchronized video, synchronized audio, do we then have that relationship if we break that recording up into individual windows? So now let's talk about the results. What did we find? The great news is that across all four caves, we found that bat count, bat count can be predicted by acoustic energy. So these graphs here are oriented a little bit differently. Um, the axes are flipped, but this, this uh, image here or this graph here is from our publication on this method but we see this nice linear relationship between the log count of the bats in a, this was a one second window here versus the rms pressure of the uh, corresponding stream we find the same relationship at another Tadarida cave and then for the gray bats again the axes are flipped but we see the same relationship that the number of bats that are present in a in um, the video frame uh, corresponds really nicely with the RMS pressure of the emerging stream. We had a very high um, goodness of fit for the first cave, which was a, a really dense cave, a little bit lower goodness of fits for the um, this second Myotis cave. This was a much a lower density cave in which the bats were circling. So we're beginning to explore now how bat behavior at the cave entrance can affect this relationship and how we might be able to account for that with some signal processing methods. But this, this method so far, kind of the straight out of the box method, as I like to say, um, works really well at dense caves when bats are emerging in a constant stream. So I would like to point out as well that um, we have documented that accuracy of this count improves with multiple recordings. So although you can have a little bit of noise and disagreement between the true number of bats that are leaving on a given night, which is in this orange column, so you can see this is by day to day, versus the acoustic prediction, some days the, the count is really off, other days it's, it's pretty close, but if you average this up over multiple nights, you get really good agreement between the true count of bats and then what is predicted by the acoustic methods. So ground truthing this over multiple nights really improves the performance of this. So how can this ground truthing be, be extended to really use this as, as a, a usable technique for counting bats in the future? Well, once we have this ground truthing equation for a specific location, you can rearrange the equation so that in the future, all you have to do is make a single acoustic recording and then apply it to the ground truthing equation that you've previously calculated, and then you can get the emerging number of bats in a given night. So what this means is once you have the ground truthing, you can then potentially have autonomous sensors with remote transmission or you can equip volunteers with a low cost audio moth recorder. They don't have to have a expensive thermal camera. They can go around with the audio moth recorder to make these recordings for you. You can also get range, range wide real time population information and even potentially have an interactive website with archival data. So the possibility for this, there are, there's a lot of ways we can extend this moving forward. So um, the question then that I turned to my co-author for was, can this method be extended to other species, other vocal animals and patchy habitats? So we focused our effort on looking at frogs, specifically bullfrogs. And so this is pilot data, but I'm really excited about this because um, for this pilot study, we looked at recordings of bullfrog choruses and the number indicated here is the number of calls in the chorus. So we had a microphone on the edge of the pond, 
the bullfrogs were scattered throughout the pond. And we looked, we did the same analysis on 10 minute segments of the frog chorus. And we found that when there were more frog, when there were more calls chorusing, there was greater acoustic energy than when there were fewer calls. Uh, we weren't able to directly count the frogs in this study, but we do find that this is a potential of moving forward. And I'm really excited about how we could potentially apply this to other species. Um, it is important to point out, however, that you have to consider background noise. So when we look at another night when there were only 146 calls, we had much greater acoustic power, but this was also a night in which we had several aircraft flying overhead. So um, you do, there are some concerns considerations that you have to take into play into place when you are um, trying to apply this method. So just to wrap up, um, the number of bats with this method and acoustic intensity is related during cave emergence. Uh, we know that we can use this to measure populations solely with acoustic recording with some caveats in that it has to be a really dense linear recording and we're still tweaking some of the signal processing we have to do for lower density or circular emergences. Uh, multiple nights give much better population estimates and maybe we have the potential to extend this to other taxa. So I am looking for testing partners I am very keen. I have a couple international partners already, but I'm keen to continue to test this method at other bat caves. I'm trying to figure out not just where the caves are that this method works really well, but also where are there caves where this method doesn't work very well? Because if I can figure out why it's not working, maybe we can come up with some solutions with some signal processing or even modification of the methods, because I really would like to turn this into a method that can be a valuable um, monitoring tool around the world. So with that, I would just like to acknowledge all the funding agencies that have contributed to this project, as well as my research assistant and my collaborator. And the citation for the paper that this method is originally based on can be found at the bottom below, as well as you can contact me with any questions at my email. So thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to your questions.